Hey, John here. This is a simple Halloween project you can knock out in your own garage in just one day and have Halloween decorations that will last a lifetime. Purchase a few five and a half inch wide fence slats from your local hardware store. Now, you don't have to have a planer for this next step. You can use a belt sander or an orbital sander, but you will need to sand one side of the fence slat. Each slat will make one box. So if you want five boxes, buy five slats. Take a tape measure and measure out 10 inches and cut your piece. If you have a specific size in mind, feel free to modify it. Using the first piece as a template, continue on and cut four pieces. Don't cut the last piece. Leave it for now and we will use it for the top and bottom. And we don't know if this will be a horizontal box yet. And yes, if you were counting, I cut one too many. The next step is for you artistic people. Draw out your face or your design on one of the sides you just cut. Once drawn out, drill a hole in the design so you can put the blade of a jigsaw in it and cut your design out. Since I have my CNC router out, I just used it to cut the designs I wanted. Yeah, I know it's cheating, but I wanted to save some time and get back to another project. Okay, for this next step, you will need a speed square and a ruler. Now, I really like the angle that comes with the top of the fence slat, and instead of cutting this away, I've decided to use it. At the very corner, make a mark, and then measure a half inch inward from that mark, and then make another mark. Take one of your 10 inch pieces and lay it on that mark, and then mark the other side of that piece. Then go back to your ruler and measure another half inch outside of that line you just drew from the piece. And then draw another line. From the second mark, set your speed square to give you a 45 degree angle. Do this on top and bottom. At this point, you want to figure out how much lip the top and bottom pieces will have over and under your lantern. And since I used a half inch from the side corners, I am going to use a half inch again from the front and the back. Once you have your half inch line mark, take a 10 inch piece and set it on the mark and make a line on the back side of that 10 inch piece. Now measure from that line to the other line. You should have three and a half inches. Now I promise you, I do not do this on purpose, but for some reason I measured the outside lines which gave me four and a half inches. Yeah, I'm brain dead. So if you're watching this and notice that I set my blade to four and a half inches, don't copy me. Set your saw to three and a half. And remember, you're only cutting two side pieces per box. With the pieces that you just cut, yes, mine will be thinner than yours, set a backstop on your miter saw. Do this by using a ruler from the end of your stop to the saw blade. We are going to cut your leftover pieces that you just cut on the table saw at three and a half inches. We will use these to secure the top of each box from falling off. Now take the piece you just marked up with the 45 degree corners and cut off the excess. Then set your miter saw to 45 degrees and cut off the corners. Remember, all this can be done with a jigsaw if you don't have a miter saw. Use that piece as a template to mark the rest of your top and bottom pieces for as many lanterns as you intend to make. Remember to mark both sides of your piece so you don't have to change the direction of your miter saw. This can become a pain if you forget to do it. Now all you have to do is flip your piece when cutting and no readjustment of your miter saw is needed. Okay, this is where I realized I cut my pieces at four and a half and not three and a half. I noticed I had no lip, and you know I would not edit that out. I really do make this up as I go along. So let me go fix those pieces real quick so we can get back on track. After I fixed all my side pieces, I took the bottom and top of each box to the router. You can use a freehand router or a table router here, it doesn't matter. I simply rounded the edge to give it more of an elegant look. I did a quick sand on all the pieces. 
Since they were plain in the beginning of this video, I really just wanted to do a once over on the rough spots on the routed edges and the face of each box. At this point, they are ready to be assembled. So start with the back of the box and two side pieces. Put some glue down on each edge and either with a hammer and brad or a brad gun, nail your pieces together. Since I am using wood glue, I just intend to put a brad at the top and bottom until the glue dries. Okay, did you catch that amateur mistake? Yes, I put the rough side up so I had to flip it over and wipe off the glue and then try again. It's amazing anyone lets me near power tools at all. Okay, this was the first box I put together. And we all say you learn from your mistakes, right? But when I realized what my mistake was, I was thrilled that it happened with Frankenstein. And I will tell you why in a second. But remember, do not attach the bottom of your box until you have put the small slide pieces on the top part of your box. So let me say it again. Start with the top of your box. Wow, I'm just full of scripts today. So for the first piece, I measured an inch from the edge. This would be the half inch lip plus the half inch width of the back piece to give me my inch. Then glue it and nail it to the bottom of the lid. I then placed the lid on and by reaching through Frank's head, I held the other piece in place and opened the lid back up and then marked it with a pencil. And then glued it and then put two brads in it to hold it in place. Yes, you can measure from the edge like you did with the first piece, but if it's off, your piece will either be loose or not fit at all. And if you put brads in it, then you'll have to go and start tearing up the box. So it is better to get your mark with a pencil and then align to that pencil mark. And that is very easy to do if you have not attached the bottom of the box yet. The second box I assembled was the elongated pumpkin face lantern. So let me speed up through what you have already seen me do, but this time let's get the top piece right. So with all your sides put together, flip your box upside down and with a pencil, trace out the inside perimeter of the box onto your lid. Take your thin pieces and align them to your pencil marks perfectly and glue and brad them down. If you align properly, the cedar should give you a great fit that with a little pressure can still easily open. Now flip your box back over and place some glue on the bottom of your box. Then place it into position onto the base piece. Flip it back over and nail it down. Wipe off any excess glue inside and outside the box and then just give it some time to dry. Overall, a super easy and cheap project that you can do with your kids. Each box will cost you around $3, and the good news is they won't rot before Halloween arrives. So what do you think? I would love to hear your comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and hit that subscribe button.